Hello and welcome to today's program. My name is Shane Holsgrove and I am the uh, lead pastor and apostolic oversight of Grace Life Ministries. And we are a disciple making, church planting, gospel centered ministry based in uh, Cape Town, South Africa. We've got a number of churches in South Africa and in Albania and Eastern Europe. And our desire is really to reach the unreached and to make disciples of the believers to, to help reach the unreached and then to strengthen and plant grace communities or churches wherever we have opportunity. That's what we're about. That's, uh, 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 that's why we exist. And uh, before we get into today's uh, teaching, I just wanted to thank all of our partners who make this program possible. Thank you. Uh, for your generosity, which is keeping us on air. And thank you so much to GBS uh, uh, TV for your generosity towards us and the, your partnership in the gospel. It's really awesome and exciting to partner with people who believe in the message of the gospel and uh, put their, their, their money even behind it to be able to help it go further. Amen. Today, I want to talk about change. Today, I want to talk about change. You know, as, a, as any, any person, not even just a Christian or a believer, but any person probably desires change in their life in some way. The most significant change that could ever occur is salvation. But here's a problem. Because a lot of Christians don't seem to ever change. And a lot of Christians seem to be sometimes even worse off than, than believers in terms of their life, in terms of maybe habits, in terms of, of uh, being nice people even sometimes. I'm sure that everybody's got an example of somebody who's not a nice Christian. And that's unfortunate. Because the moment that we say yes to Jesus, the moment we hear the gospel and we say yes to Jesus... He comes to live inside of us and we are now reborn. And this being born again, being reborn, makes us new creations. We're no longer ordinary. We're no longer like mere man. But we are supernatural. We still live in a, a body that is frail, a body which can be strengthened by the life of God which is in us. But we still, our bodies are just like the unbelievers. It's just, it's our earth suit. But our spirits within us are power packed, are stronger than we know and realize. Our spirits are just like Jesus. It is Him dwelling in us. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I love this verse. And uh, I've, I've um, had it stuck up on, on my wall, like growing up, and as a, a reminder that I'm a new person, a new creation. But I never really understood what it meant. And it didn't really have the impact in my life that it should have until I started to... Uh, hear and believe the things which I'm sharing with you this evening. Okay, that is, you know, where does this change occur and how do I experience it? Where does this change occur and how do I experience it? Well, it starts with salvation. Romans chapter 10 verse 9 and 10 says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that means to say the same thing, that He is Lord, that He is supreme, that He is who He says He is, and you shall believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So what this verse is showing us is that you know, we need to confess with our mouth, say the same thing as Jesus, say the same thing as God, and we need to, that He is Lord, that He is supreme and above all. But then we also need to believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead. And it says there that, that um, uh, we believe in our hearts unto justification. I think that's the word that it used. Let me just check that on my Bible here. It says, uh, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness. So that believing the gospel has now made me right with God. That's what we've got to believe in order to be saved. Salvation isn't a, I believe in God and now I'm doing my best to live with for Him. That is not salvation. 
Salvation is the Spirit of God coming to dwell in man because he's received the life of God into his being. And now because I have the life of God in me, I can experience transformation in my life. So I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And what that means is I'm believing that he died and rose from the dead to make me right with him. To make me righteous. As a Christian, you are no longer a sinner and you're not even a sinner saved by grace. You were a sinner, you got saved by grace, and now you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Everything that's true of Jesus is true of you. This is the good news of the gospel. And when we start to believe it, the change which has taken place in our spirits at salvation starts to come out in the rest of our lives. See, this is the thing. It says that we're new creations in Christ Jesus. So where did this new creation what, what does it look like? Where did this change occur? It's very important that we ask this question. You, if you receive Christ today, you, you can look at your body and see absolutely no difference before you receive Christ and after you receive Christ. You know, if you're overweight before you get saved, you're overweight after you get saved. If you look at your emotions, a lot of the time, yes, Jesus can transform your emotions and impact your, He can impact your body too. But most times, for most people, it's a process. And when we, after we receive Christ, when we look at how we feel, when we look at how we think, it is no difference before we get saved to after we get saved. That's why Paul challenges us and invites us to renew our minds. We need to renew our minds if we want to see transformation. What does that mean? We need to change our way of thinking if we want to see transformation in our lives. This verse if, uh, from 2 Corinthians 5.17, If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation, a new creature. All things have passed away. All things have become new. So many people never experience this because the, the change, the transformation has taken place in their spirit, not in their physical body. And not in their emotions, not in their mind, their will, their intellect. Those are, are um, we, we need to work out our salvation into our physical bodies and into uh, our emotions and our thinking, transforming the way that we make decisions, etc. See, if, if, if you, as a Christian, this is one of the tragedies of the body of Christ is that we've got a lot of Christians who are trying to become something for God with good reason, but they're trying to become something, but they don't realize that they already are. Just take case in point. Um, um, what's it called? Righteousness. Turn with me to, to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For God made Christ who never sinned to be the sin offering, or to be the offering for our sins, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. The King James Version says, For He made Him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Now that's powerful, but a lot of Christians don't believe that. Because they look at their actions, they look at their thinking, they look at the way that they are in their physical body and in their emotions and their mind, and they go, I can't be righteous. And that's a recipe for failure. That's a recipe for failure in the Christian life. If you want to be a, um, a, a victorious Christian, then you need to learn to live not by what you see, not by what you feel, but by what the Word of God says about you. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 7 says, We walk, not by, we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. So we mustn't live fixed and focused on just what we see. We have to consider the, 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 the natural realm 100%. But we're not dominated by the natural realm. We need to be dominated by the Word of God. The Living Bible uh, puts 2 Corinthians 5, 7, as we know these things are true by believing, not seeing. You know, who you are in Christ, you can't see it and believe it. You need to read it in the Word and believe it. You know, one of the biggest hindrances to the believer 
uh, uh, living like Jesus and living like we've been called to live is that they are looking at their actions, judging themselves by their actions. They're looking at themselves and they're saying, I don't act like Jesus, so I can't be like Jesus. But you are like Jesus. In your spirit, you're perfect. In your spirit. The Bible says, I think it's 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. It says that you are a spirit, a soul, and a body. Man is a three-part being. Spirit is the core of you that gets born again. Your soul is your, your mind, your will, your intellect, your emotions. That's your heart, where your heart, you, you, you can find your heart. And then you've got your body, which is your earth suit, what we see. Yeah, we need to see that we, 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 we need to, oh, well, let me put it like this. We need to learn to live according to what the, is in the spirit, not what we see and feel. Amen. So now we experience this, this amazing new birth and it's in our spirits. God doesn't want it to stay there. He wants it to be worked out. That's why the Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. It's not saying work for your salvation. It's saying work out your salvation. What's inside, now express it. Work it out. But how do we do that? How do we, we start to, to, to live this out? Well, firstly, I've already said it's by faith. We live by faith. And before we go on, let me say this as well. You know, a lot of people... It's, it's, it's great to share testimonies. It's great to share testimonies. I, I, I love hearing about what God does in people's lives and, and what He has done, and it's, it's encouraging. But here's the thing, you know, testimonies can also be wrong. Your experience is not above the Word of God. So if you experience something that's contrary to the Word, it's wrong. But sometimes, you know, we, we kind of do people a disservice because, you know, we'll put someone up to share their testimony of how they came to Christ, and what do we do? You know, we, we, we choose someone who was a drug addict and someone who was a gangster and somebody who, <laughs> you know, all, all the, had this rough life. We did it once. We were at a, uh, we had a men's conference and we had a former gang leader uh, uh, in the community. And he got up and he shared his testimony about, uh, uh, um, you know, coming to Christ and his whole life changing. And he had done everything that he needed to do to get to the top of gangs and gangsterism. And now he's a new man and he's even a pastor. And that's awesome. But, you know, testimonies like that, one of the things that's wrong with them is that the person who grew up maybe in a Christian home received Christ at a young age and, um, and didn't uh, get involved in anything sinful or wrong. You know, they were still a sinner. They still needed salvation. The fact that they grew up in good conditions and lived a good life up until the point that they received Christ doesn't make their salvation any less dramatic. Salvation is dramatic no matter what the conditions. Okay? Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. It says, And you, you were once dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. You were dead. And in uh, uh, the King James it says, you, Has he quickened or made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin? So this is showing us that before you receive salvation, you're dead. You're dead. Now you receive salvation and you've come alive. We need to see this. That every single salvation, no matter what the conditions, is radical. Amen? Because nobody could do it on, in and of themselves. But now, from the, 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 the most dramatic salvation in terms of conditions to the, 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 the easiest conversion. I don't know how else to put that, but you get what I mean. How do we start to change and see transformation in our lives? It's very important that we, 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 um, we consider this. Proverbs 23 uh, verse 7 says, For as he thinks in himself, so is he. For as he thinks in himself, so is he. So I want to ask you the question, how do you see yourself? How do you see yourself? Who do you say you are? Because the way that you think will determine the way that you are. If you see yourself as a failure, you're always going to fail. If you believe you are weak and powerless, then you're going to end up a victim in this life. You cannot consistently act in a way that's inconsistent with the way that you see yourself. So how do you see yourself? 
I spoke about this a little bit last week. But how do you see yourself? A lot of Christians see themselves as um, not a new creation, but a continuation of the old. So I was an old, uh, um, uh, my old man is still with me. They kind of see the sinful nature still here with me. Now all the, 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 the only difference is I've got a, a, get to tick, a get to heaven ticket. That's not salvation. Salvation is a rebirth which makes you completely new. As a believer, you need to see this. Too many people see their, their Christianity as just a, a mere uh, continuation of the old life. It's an opportunity to try harder. No, it's you are now a completely new creation. And if you start to see yourself as a new creation, someone who is now filled with the power and the presence of God, someone who is born again, born from above, got God Almighty living inside of them, you will experience transformation in your life and you'll start to live like Jesus more accidentally than you ever did on purpose. This is one of the keys to the victorious Christian life that so many people have missed out on. Why? Because we get saved and, uh, uh, and then we, we're told this is what you need to do now. And we're, we're, we're becoming human doings, not human beings. Salvation is not about everything you need to do. It's about what did you believe and what do you believe now? 1 John uh, 5 Verse 1 says, everyone who believes, 5 verse 1 says, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God. Think about it. If you've become a child of God, you've got his DNA. Why are you trying to be like God when you already are like God? You can't, you're not trying to grab onto something and become something as a Christian. Now what you're doing is you're, you're discovering who you already are. Christianity is not about becoming, it's about discovering. Yeah? 1 John 5 verse 4 says, For every child of God, now let me read it in the King James, it says, For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So now, because you're born of God, you're a winner just like Him. You may have had major setbacks in your life, major defeats, major struggles, but you need to start to see yourself like God sees you, filled with His DNA, filled with His power, filled with His fruit, filled with Himself. Amen? If you can start to see yourself like God sees you, it will transform and uh, revolutionize your life completely. Ephesians chapter 1, I love this, in verse 1, Paul writes and he says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. This is something else because, you know, unfortunately, large parts of the body of Christ have made sainthood out to be something where, you know, you're a saint if um, the Pope makes you a saint or if, you know, you're a saint if you're only doing good works. And this Paul shows us throughout the word that you're a saint because you believe. So if you're a believer in Christ, if you, you've been born again, you're a saint. And you need to start seeing yourself as a saint if you want to live like a saint. Because, Proverbs 23 verse 7, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So Paul starts off by calling believers saints. A saint is a most holy one or a holy thing. Someone who is blameless. Too many Christians run around blaming themselves for things that they shouldn't blame themselves for. All the blame that you deserved, all the judgment you deserve has been placed on the cross and you are now free. You need to see that in order to walk in victory. Throughout the New Testament, Christians or believers in Christ are called saints. A saint isn't someone who's just special and extraordinary. A saint is someone who believes. Okay, you're made a saint the moment you say yes to Jesus. You're not a saint because you do something special, but because of who has made you special. You know, Hebrews chapter 10 verse 10 from the Passion Translation says, By God's will we have been purified and made holy once and for all through the sacrifice of the body of Christ, the, uh, Jesus the Messiah. 
Most Christians see holiness as something to strive for. They're trying to become holy. They look at their actions and they're saying, I'm not holy in my, 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 my actions. I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with that. And then they look at their thoughts and they're like, I'm not thinking right. I need to think more. I've got to purify my thoughts and think better. And you know what? You might need to change some actions and you might need to change some thoughts. But those are actions. Those are not identity. Identity is not in action, but identity leads to action. And it's not necessarily what you, what God says about you. Like I said last week, it's about what you say about you. So you need to start to believe what God says about you. That you are righteous, you are holy because of what Jesus has done for you, not what you do for Him. Amen? You know, I, I love what Paul's doing here in this letter and in other letters he does the same. But he starts off by speaking identity over his readers. Hey saints, you know, the Bible says in Proverbs 18, 21, the power of life and death is in the tongue. Most people don't realize that your tongue or your words hold power, more power over you than they do other people. Okay, other people's words only have power over you. Their opinion only has power over you if you let it have pin, uh, um, power. So stop allowing other people's opinions of you and what they say about you to hold power over you and start to allow God's word to have power over you. Give it the value it deserves in your life so that you can start to live in freedom and in victory. Yeah, you know, there's so much power in a name or in a nickname. Not because other people are speaking out your name or your nickname, but because you're hearing it so often and you choose to believe it or not. We should always be speaking out words over people and ourselves which are encouraging, words of life, words of destiny, words that are building up people. And I'm sure that that's what Paul was doing in this situation. He's saying, hey, saints, holy ones, let me tell you more about your identity. Yeah, Paul does this in the book of 1 Corinthians 2, um, or as well. 1 Corinthians 1 verse 2, New King James Version says, To the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified, those that are holy in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all who uh, in every place call on the name of, the Lord, uh, of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours. Paul's writing the first book of Corinthians to a church which has many problems. This church has got sexual immorality, incest, racism, division, many other things. And yet Paul starts off writing to them, not saying you good for nothing, low life, scum. Like he doesn't say that ever. What does he say? He says, hey, saints. I like how he starts off. He says, hey, church of God. He's saying you guys belong to God. We need to remind ourselves and each other that we belong to God, that God desires us. He wants us. We belong to him. Then he says though, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus. Hey, to those who've been made holy because you're, you're in Christ. He, then he says, called saints, you guys are appointed as holy ones. You're not living like it, but you're appointed. That's your destiny. That's who you are. That's what God says about you. You know, and with all the, the, the crazy goings on at the church of Corinth, I'm sure that they really needed to be reminded of their true identity as, as believers. And this is true with us today. You know, when we're struggling, we don't need to be told that we're good for nothing. We don't need to be told, you shouldn't be doing this, you should be doing that. We need to be reminded of who we are in Christ. Amen? We need to be reminded of our true nature, because if we're reminded of our true nature, then we can start to live in that new nature, because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Psalm 23 is powerful. It's a prophetic psalm about the Messiah. It's a messianic psalm. And it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. So let's pause there. And I want to ask the question. This is about Jesus and our relationship with Jesus. And he says there, He leads me to green pastures. 
makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. So lush, you know, as, as a sheep, because <laughs> that's the picture that it's using, the word picture, as a sheep, I am being led to green pastures where I can feed well. As a sheep, he's leading me beside still waters. So obviously I can drink and be refreshed and it's going to restore my soul, my mind, my will, my intellect, my heart. It's going to restore me. But you know what restores me in that situation? If you look into still waters, what do you see? If you look into still waters, you see yourself. So when you're not doing so well, God isn't on your case telling you what you should and shouldn't do. God's on your case saying, hey, Come and look at the still waters. Come be refreshed. I want to show you and remind you of who you are. And when we see what He has made us, that we are righteous, that we are holy, that we are blameless, even if we're struggling right now, and we start to believe that, it starts to transform us. It starts to change us from the inside out. And we will never be the same again if we start to believe what God says about us. Amen? We need to stop going by our feelings, stop going by what we see, and we need to start going by what God's Word says about us. I want to read Hebrews 10.10 10 again, but from the Amplified Classic. It says, In accordance with this will of God, we have been made holy, consecrated, and sac sanctified through the offering made once and for all of the body of Jesus Christ, the Anointed One. You are holy because you placed faith in in Jesus and what he did for you. Stop trying to be holy and start believing that you are holy and you will see transformation in your actions and in your thought life and you'll start to live out holiness more accidentally than you ever did on purpose. Amen? These are some amazing truths that we're getting into. And I want to encourage you to, to, to listen to this again if you can. Write down the scriptures and meditate on them. If you'd like to do our uh, School of the Believer, please contact us. If you'd like to ask for prayer or for more teaching ministry, uh, more teachings that we have, please contact us. You can look at our website, www.gracelife.co, or you can email us at admin at gracelife.co. Until next time, be encouraged in the salvation truth that you are one with God. You are full of His presence. You are full of His love. You are full of His power and you are blessed. 